All right, everyone. I'm Dr. Wade McKenna. Welcome back to the Zero Downside Podcast. As always, brought to you by MoabTexas.com. Please remember to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notifications button to get the rest of this playlist. And today's question is compare and contrast BPC-157 to TB-500 or TB-4 or thymosin beta-4, all the same thing, okay? I think we've kind of gone through the previous videos what each one of those is a little bit more specific to the problem it, 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 that we would address with the use of that peptide, I do think that there's a significant amount of not only synergy, one making the other better, but the pathway differences between them become really involved because there's so many things that they both do. They both get to the same place, but they kind of took a different road, if that makes a difference. I think it's like pulling up a map program. You're trying to pick the best way to get there, your body needs to have those same kind of choices sometimes because we don't know what pathway's broken. We don't know where the roadblock is. We don't know where the construction is sometimes. And so you don't just have a map app to look at and go, oh, well, this is the right one for you or burst that one. So I think that a lot of times when someone's trying to accomplish an overall wellness perspective, maintain muscle mass, increase cognitive function, have the cardioprotective effects, both of these peptides, peptides are synergistic in accomplishing those goals, but from different pathways. I would think of, in our clinic, I think of BPC-157 more as the inflammatory mediator, especially for gut health. But if you're talking about cognitive dysfunction, musculoskeletal pain and recovery, which as an orthopedic surgeon, most of our patients are experiencing those type of issues when they come see us. If you're talking about the overall musculoskeletal inflammatory pain cycle, BPC-157 is probably best utilized for that, and I think of it more on the anti-inflammatory pain side. TB-500, if you've lost a lot of weight, if you're fighting, if you're not the best patient for a musculoskeletal procedure, and what I mean by that is the average knee replacement patient, it can be, from a chronically ill standpoint, maybe have some significant muscle mass issues, especially if they've been trying to lose weight. And so they're fighting kind of that chronic loss and muscle wasting, decreased strength, not sleeping well, trying to get out of that inflammatory cycle of muscle wasting and trying to build muscle without burning glycogen stores from it. That's really difficult without TB500. But again, there's a significant amount of synergy. So the real effect of these together is angiogenic, it's cardioprotective, it's neuroprotective, it's immune modulation on the neuroinflammatory side, it's restorative as far as normal muscle metabolism without the cytokine and inflammokines and, and chemokines, they get kind of in the way of healing. So from a healing perspective, they work together in a very synergistic effect because they augment what the other one does. I think isolated apart, if you have more gut inflammatory issues, it's more pain from a, an inflammatory perspective that's not worth having surgery for, but you also don't want to have to take a lot of inflammatory agents or your gut's been ruined by inflammatory agents. That's a really, really good use of BPC-157. The other probably best use of BPC-157 that's actually documented in the literature is it can pretty much directly counteract the effect that steroids, corticosteroids, have had on muscle, tendon, and bone. To be able to directly counteract that effect is a great use of BPC-157. Anyone on chronic corticosteroid for some other medical issue that they've had can become kind of sarcopenic. They, they become kind of immune broken. And immune modulation with the use of BPC-157 is, is significant. TB500, more on the muscle mass side. So from our perspective, they're both very synergistic. So when you just open and read about it, you're trying to make the decision on which one is for you. There's so many things that they both have a pathway to accomplish. If you're just looking for better blood supply, more muscle mass, I wanna feel better, I wanna sleep better, I'm trying to turn back the hands of time as far as anti-aging, I, I think it's gonna be very difficult to differentiate overall those pathways. If you're looking at what works well together, 
and one's more about gut and inflammation, neuroprotective, cardioprotective, but, and, or I've been on chronic steroid use, BPC-157. If I've lost a bunch of weight, whether on, by myself, on purpose, working really hard and doing all the other peptides for weight loss, or I've lost a lot of weight on accident because I've been sick, TB-500 is the, the peptide that's been used most for that maintaining of healthy muscle mass. And I think that's the best way to think about them. If I was gonna compare and contrast them, I will tell you in our clinic, they're used a lot together because the goals of the patients are all of that kind of combined. And so I think that um, it's really gonna be kind of what you're looking, it's just like everything else we do. Which one you need is based on what is your symptom, what effect are you looking for, are there some overlay of these peptides? Yes. I think that used together, you can accomplish a lot of the, whatever your individual goals are, but that's really how you make the decision is what are your symptoms and what are your goals? Hopefully that's a little bit more information um, about how those two work together, what their individual side effect profile is, basically comes down to itching and redness around the site of an irritated injection site, which is the most common complication of anything you're gonna inject. Other than that, they really, there's no increase in the complications using them together. There's no difference in the overall side effect profile. We do dose them a little differently. You can take BPC more often in a day because the half-life is so much shorter. But other than that, it really is, is very patient-specific, and hopefully I was able to give you a little generalized information to help better educate you on some of the decision-making. Again, thank you for your attention. We're humbled by your attention and support of our podcast. And thanks um, for tuning in. Hopefully, we will be able to continue the peptide journey as we go through some of the growth hormone stimulators in the next episodes.